Today's episode is brought to you by the High Noon Bump. It's High Noon. everyone and welcome to high noon podcast the competitive overwatch podcast i'm your host of blevins with me as always is death blow what's up buddy not too much my man i'm in a playoff kind of mood right now yeah and i've got i definitely playoff. have i've got the sounds ready let's do it oh well, god i just turned you up way high for me but not on the stream so we're good to go we're gonna be talking <laughs> about right. playoffs. we're gonna be talking about playoffs. playoffs we're gonna be talking about everything today Wait, we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna, we're, Playoffs. We're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got the button. The button's already getting worn out, and it's going to continue this entire show. I am sure of it. But with that, we do have a lot to talk about today. So let's go over some of our nice housekeeping stuff. If you haven't heard already, we've been talking about it every episode since it's happened. All of our shows are on Spotify, backed by or not backed by, due to popular demand. Spotify, Spotify, Spotify. Search Hiding Productions to get all the shows there and hit subscribe on the Spotify. It costs you nothing unless you get Spotify Premium, but I don't care about that. Hashtag not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, so I don't care. I think we're obligated to say not a sponsor. Yeah, why not? Um, So I don't care if you do or not. In fact, don't. Um, You can enjoy the ads like the rest of us, uh, Phil. Uh, (laughs) But we do have uh, Black Watch Report, of course, reporting on the Tier 2 scene for Overwatch. Of course, brand new episode coming up tomorrow. And, uh, of course, bring a new episode last week as well, because the Black Watch Report, unlike us sometimes, they never stop. There's no there's no stopping Kyle and Thorne, no matter what. They have always they always find a way. If there's a will, there's a way. If there's a Thorne and a Kyle, there's a Black Watch Report. There's a Thorne or a Kyle. That's there's true. There's a Black Watch Report. That is true. Uh, we've also got uh, a new episode of Foul Play last week uh, where we introduced our new host, at least for the time being. We got Heebie uh, Heebie-Jeebie, who's been, what, this is his second or third third week? This will Tomorrow will be his third episode. Tomorrow will be his third episode, of course, the, the veteran A. Smith. And last week was the introduction to a brand-new host, Teppo Yama, who... Uh, has had much critical acclaim in the past week, at least from what we've heard. So make sure if you are into Fantasy Overwatch League at all, you want to get some good strategy and uh, discussion about fantasy, check out Foul Play. But let's talk a little bit about what we did this past week. Death, anything fun and exciting for you? Um, No, I was really just invested in this crazy stage we have going on here for Overwatch League, watching a lot of that, playing some Dauntless, playing Mm -hmm. some Smash Bros, um, just kind of hanging out and trying to relax uh, a little bit as we're getting ready for a long weekend for me coming up here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So um, looking forward to that. I probably won't have done anything next week either when we talk about it because that's how (laughs) I like to spend my vacations. (laughs) I'm actually going to be in Canada, ironically, for Fourth of July weekend. Oh, Canada! Oh, Canada! <laughs> uh, yes, that is exactly. <laughs> it's funny because you know the national anthem. <laughs> but enough about that. Let's move on here and delve into it's news. Got some uh, news before we get into the news. We actually do have a correction from last week that you want to go over that correction yeah uh so after we recorded we were hanging out after the episode last week at bare hands dm me to let me know that we're pronouncing the name of the main tank incorrectly uh it's in it's not carry on it's actually pronounced carry on my wayward son. so again just to be clear it's not carry on that's wrong instead carry you need to say So now everybody knows we're all good to go. We're all on the same page, and we can refer to the player correctly if he ever gets to the stage. Yeah. Uh, Carry on. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Got him! Got him! (laughs) All right, so we actually got some real news. (laughs) 
Uh, Fissure, uh, formerly of the London Spitfire, formerly of the Los Angeles Gladiators, and now formerly of the Soul Dynasty, has officially retired. Goodbye, Fissure. We, we hardly knew ye. He went from uh, non-starter to absolute world killer and team warper. MVP real, candidate. MVP candidate. Most handsome tank. Most handsome player in Overwatch League. To barely played. To all sorts of stuff. And now is done. So that was what I would think we you could call a whirlwind of a, <laughs> of a ride in the league. I think... Uh, He's had quite the go so far, and it's kind of funny to really sit here and and think about this, too, because Fissure wasn't really playing for them. I mean, he was occasionally, but it was like just the token map here and there, and it wasn't it wasn't very often at all. And it was just really interesting that they weren't playing him, and it, it, it raised a lot of questions. But Marvel's just been performing very, very well. He's mm-hmm. clearly a, a main tank player that belongs in the league. Um, but it's funny because this is a retiring off of the bench, right? And it right. just... It feels like there's no player that could have retired from their bench spot that could have had more of an impact in how I view a team, right? Because right. Fissure really represented the maximum potential that this roster could have, mm-hmm. right? Because you wanted to see them perform at their best with Fissure in and with Ryu J. Hong in and just with Fleta, Fleta in the lineup. <laughs> and, you know, it was kind of those three that really, to me, represented the core of what this team needed to be to be at its best. Mm-hmm. As good as Marvel's been, we saw more than enough of Fissure last year, I think, to know that he had the potential to single handedly transform a team and what they're able to do. And, he, you know, he's got that very aggressive play style mm-hmm. that just pops off on screen it's fun to watch it's really effective all it is just it seemed to check all the boxes and then he goes over here to soul who just it, it benches everybody for everybody at all times right. nobody's playing time is safe and uh, i think he clearly just got pretty frustrated by it uh, obviously he's a player that wants to be on the stage uh, unless it's the playoffs and then he's going to bench himself but uh you know other than that it's playoffs. it's just crazy to think that he's he's now done and out and going into the year he was you know is he the number one or the number two tank player in the world and what right. kind of impact is he going to have on the soul dynasty roster we weren't even sold it was going to be a positive impact because of his attitude and all these things it's clear it wasn't a negative but he sure didn't have a positive impact on this team but yet he leaves he retires and i'm sitting here looking at this roster like does it have a hole in it now like is there is there a missing piece? What are they going to do when we get into a very aggressive dive meta? That's going to be a style we've never seen Marvel play. If all of a sudden they're they're weak in, in a very aggressive tank meta or something like that, you know, how are they going to react? How are they going to be able mm-hmm. to um, adapt and, and use their talent that they have now that kind of the ace in the hole that they seem to always have in their back pocket is gone. Um, so we're, we're going to only have to find out. Ironically, I think it, it was set them up at least soul to like, save them from themselves a little bit right <laughs> right because no, whether it was marvel or fissure you yep. did want to see just a hundred percent consistency about who was playing or at least i did uh, and i know a lot of people feel the same way about soul and, and how mm-hmm. they manage their roster and it was like well jay hong was playing all the time and but now marvel has to play all the time so now jay hong's on the bench and they were you know they were playing uh their backup flex support all right. these things so they just seem destined to repeatedly shuffle their line out their roster together to, to find the six that's going to join them on stage that day. Uh, it's, it's perplexing, but at least for the time being, uh, we do see some consistency here on the tank line. I do expect soul to go out and find themselves another backup main tank. They brought two for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the way they envision their roster being set up. Uh, they didn't trade fissure away. Fissure stepped away. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he didn't seem, I don't think personally seemed overly happy about the situation. I, I don't speak Korean to know all of his words, but to me, and this is, I'm just going to use this as a segue and go right into it, unless you have anything to add about how it kind of impacts the team as a whole. I, I just thought it was weird that it was such a big thing, right? Fissure left LA Gladiators in the heat of the playoffs. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it was this big thing. Oh, he's going to play for Saul. Okay, you know, maybe there were some outside of game things. He didn't want to be on L.A. He wanted to be on Seoul. And then he goes to Seoul, and, like, it's not like they played him and he stunk, which would make this make a, at least a little bit more sense. It was like 
He never even got a shot. Now, granted, he probably got a shot in scrims, and maybe that's what they're basing it entirely off of. But it's like he was never on the main stage. He never got a chance to perform. He, I mean, the meta wasn't exactly perfect for Fissure. The team, it's just like it seems like either he never got, he didn't get a fair shot, or Soul just didn't do enough research into like him and how he would fit the team because he didn't like. It's like trading for like a top prospect and then just sitting him on the bench and doing nothing with him. That seems wrong. It seems wrong in some way, regardless of how you look at it, right? Like, just don't pick him up if you, you know. I, I don't know. Yeah, to me, I kind of read this like he wants to control everything. He wants to be the main tank, the head coach, the general manager, right. and the public relations guy, all all from his mm-hmm. his seat on the stage. And the diva, and, not not the, right, not <laughs> the diva, not right. not, not the not diva the, player. The uh, yeah, it's it's just it's really strange to kind of see this. Um, to me, especially from if I was going to expect somebody to come in and be this way. I would think it would be like the consensus best mechanically skilled DPS player from the West, right? Like, you know, somebody mm-hmm. from the USA that they like, kind of knew some teams really wanted to be Western and, and felt like they were good enough that that team then had to have him and then mm-hmm. he could kind of control things. And also, I, I don't know when I think, you know, uh, Korean and Asian culture and granted I'm fairly ignorant on the topic. Mm-hmm. I always think everything's always about respect and, and things like that. And everything's very, you know, respect your elders, you know, all that, all that sort of thing. Right. And this is just a player that's like, Nope, I know what's best. I know what's right. Oh, you, you traded for me. You put all this faith in me. You gave me this opportunity to perform. Uh, I don't care. I'm not playing in the playoffs for you. I want off this team. This right. is the way I'm doing that. You know, it's just, it, it just always feels like it's something with fissure, even when it doesn't need to be right. And, and granted, this time maybe it it did need to be i don't know i'm very curious to see if he does make an attempt to get back into the league he certainly got the talent that somebody would give him a shot but personally if i'm a general manager i want nothing to do with this right now i i can go find myself a player that's actually reliable and not going to be a you know a sideshow or create a a a fiasco at any given Mm -hmm. time whenever he feels like it and i think it's probably all things considered the way marvel's been playing the way it takes a bad decision that they were definitely going to make at some point, mm-hmm. uh, kind of out of their hands. I think it may have just been the best for both parties. I, I'm not sure Fissure has what it takes to be in this league environment where everything's right. team based and you're not necessarily the center of attention. And um, mm-hmm. you know, it can be that way on a team the way the way esports used to work and the way Overwatch esports used to work. You can be the star of the team because you built it and if people right. don't like it team. then they wouldn't have joined the team and right. uh that sort of a thing and and so yeah it's not like that anymore and i'm not sure fissure has the mentality that it takes uh to really succeed in this environment even if he's got more than enough mechanical skill that he could succeed if he would just choose to right the other thing is like his mechanical skill is amazing on the winston in certain metas like we saw him play and like he was fine but you can get better than fine and you can certainly get it you can at least get on par with fine that maybe isn't going to undermine the organization of what you're doing so if i agree with you here if i'm a if i'm an org do i want to invest you know do i want to even on a contender team do i want to put a player like fissure on my team and work him up and maybe get him to a point where he can play in overwatch league again or do I want to have a uh, like 16 year old prospect that is maybe not nearly as mechanically good gifted as Fissure, but could be, and you know, put the time into them? I think the answer is the latter for a lot of leagues, and that's or for a lot of teams, that's what I would choose at least. But what was the other point you were going to get to with with Fissure? I was just going to say uh, when I was talking about how I didn't, I don't think he was happy with Soul, and I think he just was fed up with kind of the league environment and wanted out. Is Took him about two seconds after walking out the door, and he he locked and load confirmed and said two 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 roll lock is happening. It's it's going to be in stage four. They've already told all the teams, basically all that stuff. So we're gonna wait to really go in depth and analyze it until the league announces it because when they announce it, they can't go back on it. But right. they could theoretically look at all this DPS play we're getting in stage three. And if a, if an LA Valiant or a Houston or a Shanghai or a mm-hmm. team that really relies on these DPS comes out and wins stage three, I can't sit here and honestly say there's a 0% chance that Overwatch League doesn't 
go back on this if it's right. already been a, it's a decision that's been made and say no we're not going to do that we want to preserve that since it doesn't appear to be needed anymore we want to preserve right. our our vision of the game so we'll wait to go in depth on that but no that by all accounts and there's just every week we do an episode we mention it because there's another account mm-hmm. there's another source that's saying that this is coming and this is happening and that the teams know and everything like that and honestly you read between the lines on some of the roster acquisitions that have been made and things like that and it, it really starts to look more and more apparent so uh looking at a, a new uh, a new style of of gameplay come stage four and i say that even with all these three dps compositions because those won't be possible you will have to have uh, two tank players on the stage in stage four so this solo hammond you know meta that we're in right now won't really be able to exist uh going forward if that does happen so yeah i mean i have no reason to believe that anyone is lying about this and it very well may have been or be at the at the time of them saying that that this is happening but like you said that doesn't mean it's going to happen um they they still have the chance to change their mind or i mean from their perspective like hey guys we haven't said anything we didn't change our mind we never said anything you know um, yeah so. yeah they're not they're not tied to it or like obligated to fulfill that until they tell the public uh now that the, the general managers of the teams and everything they might feel very differently about that and if they did in fact go around and tell all the teams i can't imagine they walk it back but we don't know that we don't know that that happened and we can't reliably right say that so yeah. what, what was our our motto if it's not confirmed we won't know i don't remember what it was not official will remain judicial there there we go um but this looks uh, this is about a step maybe step and a half away from being official it's it's semi-official yeah um (laughs) so it'll be semi-judicial um but i'll save all of my opinions and whatnot until it is confirmed or deconfirmed let's move on and talk about some maybe lighter news here uh not one, but two former High Noon podcast, High Noon Hot Seat uh, uh, alumnists have joined the Toronto Defiant in yeah. our very first pro player, Mangachu, and the one and only Mr. Logix himself. Yeah, and that's definitely the number one line on both of their resumes, too. It former, is. Uh, yep. Former High Noon podcast uh, guest. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, two DPS acquisitions here for uh, our Toronto Defiant, a team that both of us uh, root for together instead mm-hmm. of arguing about New York versus Houston, since mm-hmm. it's not really much of an argument most of the time. Nope. But come the first match of the playoffs, my friend, it very well might be an argument I'm again. I'm not even going to watch the playoffs. They don't exist in uh, my mind. They- <laughs> <laughs> Unless New York wins, in which case they do again. Sort of like Nene's grabs in the playoffs. They just sort of don't exist. Uh, But, (laughs) yeah, uh, listen, Mangachu and Logix are two players that we we obviously like since we brought them in to talk to them. Spoiler alert, when we do an interview, it's always with somebody we like, not just with somebody that we can get. Um, And I I remember back to Mangachu's been at the, maybe not the top of competitive play, but he's been up there for a very long time. When we did our interview with him, I remember this vividly, there was no leaderboard at the time when we sat down and talked to Mangachu. Mm-hmm. Um, before we actually released it, he was the the leaderboard, the first ever top 500 leaderboard was out. Mangachu was number one on that leaderboard, mm-hmm. I think globally. If not, it was definitely North America region. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was then we got to release it. You know, interview with the number one DPS or oh, number yeah. one Overwatch fl- player in in the world or something or North America, whatever it was. Yeah. However, we build it. Um, so that was great. That's that speaks to how long he's been there, right? I'm sure many of the Overwatch League fans don't know a time when there was no leaderboard out there. Uh, yeah. And Logic, still remember from last season, uh, he played for the Florida Mayhem. Mm-hmm. They had a rough season last year as well as this year, but Logix was, without a doubt, one of the bright spots. Mm-hmm. He was good enough that they subbed out Saya player for him on occasion, and as much as that rankled me a little bit, mm-hmm. I really couldn't argue with the results Logix was getting. He was He was a fragger. He was doing really well for that team. Uh, when given the opportunity, he was really slumping when he entered Overwatch League, like the tournament right before it. He did he didn't look great. He didn't look great in like the first stage last year, but he really turned it around throughout the year. Um, so him and Mangachu both joined the team, and both of them saw the stage this week immediately yep. right away. Um, so that was great to see, and I think we're going to be talking about them a little bit later on in these storylines here. In just a yeah, minute, actually, the whole thing about logics was that he was on misfits 
back in the original contender seasons and it was all the the main talking point was oh he crumbles on land he can't play on land he's amazing online like and he was he kind of almost came out of nowhere uh for misfits and really shined and brought them into that uh the contenders playoffs for i think season zero or one i don't remember which which contender season it was but yeah really came out of nowhere and then kind of they kind of misfits as a whole kind of crumbled when it got to land and that was the whole talking point and oh are they going to be good on land or not and i guess that really kind of panned out right with the florida mayhem not being great but uh yeah thorn rain confirms contender season zero god that was it feels like forever ago, but I didn't watch that, that tournament. I was playing in it, so yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't watch. It. <laughs> I mean, you could, but uh, yeah, I mean, after I was it's summarily executed in like the third round, I was able I was to watch say, plenty. You, but you weren't in the playoffs. I know that. <laughs> uh, Stupid CLG. <laughs> was it CLG? Oh, regardless, yeah. Uh, yeah. So definitely, definitely, super happy to see both of them uh, join the team um, and. Join the Defiant too, which is really, really nice. Uh, for- yeah, Mangachu is, I believe, a Toronto native, yes. definitely yep. a Canada native, but I think he's representing his home city, which is great yep. for Mangachu and great for the team. Uh, yeah, we're we're really excited as fans about both of these additions, and hopefully, we'll be able to talk a little more about that. Why? Yes, and we will be getting to that right about now as we move into it's tournament talk. <laughs> Let us start off the matches. Not quite as many wacky, bizarre world uh, results as there were uh, last week, but there are still a couple. Uh, yeah. We start off with Hangzhou Spark winning 3-2 to two over the LA Valiant. The Seoul Dynasty winning 3-1 to one over the Paris Eternal. And here, here's one right off the bat. Chengdu Hunters beating the San Francisco Shock 3-2. to two. Don't know too many people who who uh, who picked that one. Uh, we've <laughs> got the Los Angeles Valiant winning four to zero versus the London Spitfire. Uh, LA Gladiators winning four to zero versus the Toronto Defiant, and Houston Outlaws winning three to zero versus the Washington Justice. On Saturday, we saw NYXL win easy game wasn't even worried a little bit for even a second three to two versus the dallas fuel in a reverse sweep no less uh philadelphia fusion wins three to two versus the boston uprising uh, i called that exactly by the way uh Hangzhou spark wins four to zero versus the florida mayhem and shanghai dragons wins three to one versus the guangzhou charge rounding out the week on sunday we saw vancouver titans i believe secure their number one spot uh, in the playoffs here, four to zero versus the Los Angeles Gladiators. San Francisco Shock four to zero versus the London Spitfire. Houston Outlaws winning three to one versus the Toronto Defiant. And Seoul Dynasty three to zero versus the Chengdu Hunters. Oh, I'm sorry. It was just me doing finger guns yeah, because uh, the you. Houston Outlaws <laughs> are <laughs> locked and loaded yeah, into true. the right, stage I'll, playoffs. I'll give, I'll give you that. The Outlaws are coming. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, this was, I just want to point out too, my bold prediction, it was even you, Blevins, were like, it easily by far the most bold. And granted, it was that Houston would win a stage playoffs, not make it to a stage playoffs. But here, in the sure. manner that they got here, beating San Francisco and everything like that, yeah. throughout, throughout the loss to Florida. Yeah, but I was, was going to say, it looks, <laughs> it looks a little, but I mean, we were that game away, right? That a kind of anomaly of a game away right. from them being six and one and having like the two or the three seed right. essentially going into this thing. So um, just, just got to flex a little bit on, on that part of it. But um, you also take credit because you've been saying for months now that just play Linkser on Widow for <laughs> And it turns yeah. out mm, maybe uh, one of the best Widow players in the world actually playing Widow is not yeah, too shabby. Just, just just play DPS. Yeah, I really wouldn't give up on the fact that I, I believed in the roster and thought they had a good amount of talent, even in the midst of an 0-7 stage while it was happening. Right. Um, and I'm, I am glad to see that that panned out a little bit. I will say, though, I think they're, they've are they fallen off a little bit. I thought they looked dominant in the first couple weeks of the stage. Now they look good, but maybe not dominant anymore. I don't know if that's there's a playbook on them. Teams are able to prepare. 
could just be map based too. Going back to my stage one map theory I had with them that they set on fire because they just decided to make all maps bad maps and <laughs> um, you know go go level two with that whole that whole strategy. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. It, it'll be interesting. I'm very curious how they'll do in the stage playoff format since they'll have some control over the maps. But at the yeah. same time, so will the other team, right? Mm-hmm. So they can be put into their terrible maps and they can be put into those situations. But then. If they do, you can only do that every other time, right? Because right. the loser picks the next map. I'm pretty sure is how it works. So yeah. um, it's going to be – they could be really fun. They could just go deep in all of their playoff games because teams get to alternate sending them to their terrible maps, mm-hmm. and then they get to pick the good one to go to. And, you know, so they could be a whole lot of fun to watch uh, as they progress through the stage playoffs, if they progress through the stage playoffs. They are looking to have the seven or eight seed, I think, um, which would be like – new york or vancouver (laughs) so it could be Uh, not the most favorable matchup but hey they were map five part of the whole reason people caught on to them was their five map game against new york and um last stage the best they looked was against vancouver in the first Mm -hmm. match of the stage um so and just the results we've seen this stage tell you these old style goats teams are far from safe against these new style of right. DPS teams. Any one of them is beatable. And it's almost better in my mind for them to go against one of these teams that's like hard stuck in goats because yeah. they've been so good at it that they feel like they need to keep playing it when they don't have to. Obviously, they feel like they need to never go into it, although they sure tried their best for th- three minutes and 58 seconds on Eichenwald <laughs> against, uh, uh, against Toronto at the end there to play goats. And <laughs> who knew? Eight seconds left on the clock and four players switching to DPS was all they needed to take the first point and push almost the entire map. Um, I'll digress a little bit on that, though. Um, but, yeah, so it's it's just been a, a crazy week. And, yeah, the Chengdu uh, versus San Francisco result really stands out as one yeah. that hi- just highlights what I was just talking about, where the, the DPS teams can do at any time they can they can suffer, you know serve a, a fatal blow to one of these heavy goats teams going into this playoff right i mean it it's kind of what we've been talking about the entire season it's like goats is like it's such a consistent uh it's such a consistent comp that like if you bash your head goats versus goats the better team's always going to win that's why we saw San Francisco and Vancouver do so well. You're never go- you're like you're not going to out goats them and there's no pop off, there's no huge break point where like yeah. you get to pull ahead with the with the Sombras, with the Widowmakers, with these even with these bastards on defense. Like there's so much one individual player can do to really like crack open a, a point and really really push forward. And we've seen, I mean, Chengdu Hunters, I believe it was Yang Zhao Long was really like popping off at certain points and just like really broke open some of these points. And like, you know, in GOATS, it's just like a long drawn out fight where like it's not happening. Also, since you brought up the, the man individually, Yang Zhao Long needs to not be called YXL. I heard casters calling him YXL, and then when Chengdu plays against New York, it's going to be Nixel, and it's a YXL, IDQ'd and it's the like player, not the team, it, right? It's it. we just we don't we need to. Like, oh, it's going to happen only again hacks someday, can right? Do it. Only we've, hacks is allowed we, to do it. We've already got Paris the map and Paris the team. Like, that it's is happen. actually confusing to me because people are like, it, oh, they can't win. On, they can't win on Paris. I'm like. Versus Paris? Versus Paris? Oh, yeah. uh, they can't beat Paris. Wait. Let's not opt Paris. into <laughs> these confusions that don't need to exist, please. Can we just purposefully steer clear of them yeah. and when we're not here's forced the thing. into it? Okay, thanks. Yang Zhao Long, YXL. It's the same number of syllables. It's not like yeah, Yin Ne Zheng Le Long Problem. It, it's just the same number of syllables. You're just used to saying YXL versus Yang Zhao Long. It's no different. Stop it. Just, just stop it. Unless it's actually he can do whatever he wants because he got his he, he, basically because he, he grew up here. His chop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's that's what gives him the license. Um, but yeah, so I guess the the question we need to ask ourselves here is: with San Francisco suffering that loss this week to Chengdu, a team that's not even in this stage playoffs, right? They were right. three and four on the stage. We look at their standings. They're currently at four. They're going to be going against Shanghai, who really pioneered the. Sombra Goats meta that they seem to really struggle with against Houston and 
uh, you know, they they're more than than equipped enough to go into a DPS style of meta. So assuming this now Shanghai has two matches to go. They're one of the teams whose standings can change drastically right. here. They're not locked for the playoffs. We'll get to the playoff odds in a minute. But assuming it stays the same, do you see San Francisco advancing past the first round of the playoffs? Do I see them advancing? Uh, if I had to bet, I'd say yes. But is it? Uh, is it? Is this going to be a well? Let's see. Uh, let's continue the saga of Vancouver versus San Francisco and just see. And you know, what, let's let's just cut right to the finals. No, I don't think that's the case. I mean, both of the you know, San Francisco and Vancouver have now lost uh, in the regular season. They've lost a, not you know not just to each other. Actually, I don't think uh, I'm pretty sure only Vancouver has beat San Francisco. Vancouver. Uh, lost to the valiant which like i don't know how many people are picking that so i think any of these teams can lose to anyone at this point the playoffs you know the sports magic etc cetera, etc cetera, anything can happen if i had to bet yeah sure i'm gonna pick the i'm gonna pick the the you know the heavy favorite but it's not a lock like i think it, it's almost seemed like it's been in the give me the uh, give me the top three in your power rankings going into this playoffs going into the playoffs uh ny also not clinched. I know. I'm still making them, obviously. <laughs> Probably Hong Zhao and Man, I I, I I got I'd have to pick Vancouver. I'd be silly not to pick Vancouver. Those are my top three. Yeah, so I no think it mine are like I think mine are in, in a particular order, uh, New York and then the Valiant and then Hong Zhao at number three. Sure. I, I just it's it's so wide open right now. I mean, the margins between these two teams. Right. Vancouver obviously comes in for so you know, then and it it kind of makes a little bit sense and and maybe follows standings a little closer from there. Except for I don't know, Souls probably like ten or eleven to be perfectly honest with you, just <laughs> their record. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's crazy going into these stage playoffs. I've not had one where we've gone into it and it felt this wide open. You know, you felt you're we're talking about like puncher's chances in the first round and. Everybody right now is five and two. Like Houston's currently sitting in the eight seed. They're five and two. <laughs> five and two yeah. is the two or the three seed in other stages. Right. You know, the way things worked out this stage, right. all these teams have really, really performed. And that's it been at the the peril of you know Washington, Toronto, Atlanta, Boston, Dallas, and Florida, who are all sitting at, at one or less wins. Uh, so obviously there's got to right. be a flip side to the coin with it. Right. There's very little middle of the pack. But, I mean, you're talking about a, a Gladiators team, which was everybody's number four going into this stage, mm -hmm. barely just clinging to the longest of odds to, to possibly make it in. So uh, it's definitely wide open and um, – San Francisco, I think it seems the most likely to uh, of the, the two kind of regular finals mm -hmm. participants here to right. not make it in. Um, and then everything's going to shuffle again going into stage four. Mm -hmm. So uh, assuming the roll lock is correct. So, yeah, things are, are looking really good. But uh, I guess the, the next thing to talk about is kind of the flip side of the coin, right? Sa right. San Francisco looks shook. Uh, and then, as you wrote, sparks are flying. However, yeah. the, the Hangzhou spark are really on a tear. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to unseat the LA Valiant on their really crazy run this stage, right? Mm -hmm. We we looked at, at the Valiant and Houston early in the stage when they kind of flipped the script early on and said, oh, well, Houston's at least got the easy schedule and the Valiant have the really difficult schedule, but they're both right here still, right? right. So I think you got to give a lot of credit to what the Valiant have been able to do, and that means you have to give a lot of credit to Hang Zhao for pulling off that 3-2 to two win against them. Obviously, 4-0 against the Florida Mayhem. We can kind of skip over that a little bit. They didn't even well, try. A little bit. I mean, Mayhem, I mean, yes, Mayhem is still Mayhem at the end of the day. But, like, they showed signs of life. They, like, last week they really, you know, obviously <laughs> beat the beat the outlaws. But, <laughs> uh, like, they, what? you know. They, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, just, exactly. It's weird. I, like, blacked out last week or something. Uh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> mayhem, I mean, Beating Mayhem at this point, even though they showed signs of improvement, is still, you know, it, it, take it with a grain of salt. But it, it wasn't like they beat, the, you know, week one Florida Mayhem. They, this is a at least somewhat improved team. They really just dumpstered right over them. So, yeah, no, Hangzhou, 
I mean, I think Hangzhou is finally living up to like some of the preseason hype that they had. Yeah. Like a lot of people, like they were like the. I mean, it it probably goes just because of the the people we know and the content creators and the people that follow contenders and all that. That like they were like the secret in air quotes like top five team that like no one knew about again in air quotes but like everyone was talking about them being super good it's like okay um the hype on, the hype on Hangzhou got so bad that i remember talking to you off air before an episode and i just went man the only thing in the from this entire season that i want more than anything is for Hangzhou to just be terrible i just i can't listen points. to this anymore <laughs> i just don't want to hear it and they, they were pretty bad as out of the gate. So I kind of got that a little bit, and the hype really died down on them. To a, it's down to a tolerable level now. It's a dull roar. Yeah, now they're uh, just a, and, they're just a and, solid team. And now they deserve, but I feel like they deserve that hype now, and they're almost not well, getting it. I feel like so. Gushue deserves the hype because they were flip, they were doing what we have said. I mean, yeah, I get it. Stop it. I, well, I, I kind of get it for these teams. Cause it's like, yes, this is their these are their real matches, but they're still kind of like – testing the waters in some in some point so like they solidified it and now they're playing gushway and look at they're you know they're good now or they're yeah. you know they're there's they're consistently good it seems so far so yeah and it's not a knock on no smite either it's that these rosters and it's it's been proven to us through the 12 teams we had last year the 20 we have this year mm -hmm. Consistency across your roster is really, really important. You can make a couple swaps here and there, but for the most part, you want to be running with the, the, a main six and a couple map specific, you know, change ups here and there right. can Consistent be okay. Swaps, but but wholesale, you know, tank line swaps for two of the two maps and not you know uh, every single game and it, it's not even map specific. It's just you know we're splitting play time 50 50 between these guys it just doesn't work and it's just a recipe for um lackluster performances and and surprising losses mm -hmm. and things like that yep. so uh, it's great to see them really solidify their their starting roster they are still i think ria came out for assassin a little bit this week and but that's to suit the three dps right meta we're in now it's you know it's it's it is kind of a necessary evil that falls under the occasional swap here and there that as long as it's planned and accounted for, and it seems to be uh, that I, I do think it's relatively okay to do. But yeah, Hangzhou looks great. They're, uh, they're going strong into the playoffs, and I think they need to be really considered as a, a finals mm -hmm. contender going into this thing because uh, they're just they're a model of consistency right now. They're the anti-Philly you know, from last year right. since Philly's pretty reliably mediocre at the moment. Um, you know, they're they're that team that just steady as she goes. You know what you're getting every single time they're out there, uh, and it's tough to beat. So uh, big props to Hangzhou, and uh, congratulations to their fans. I think you guys are going to be in for a really exciting stage playoffs. I think, I mean, maybe maybe we didn't say this last stage playoffs. I think we said it in the first one. This seems this might actually be the most exciting stage playoffs of all of them, including last season. For stage. Yeah, I think we said it about stage one just yeah. because there were so many upsets and we were getting used to the way that worked in GOATS. Right. So, you know, just you have an off day, you come in, you can lose to anybody at any time. But um, this one, I think, has a whole different level of feel to it because mm -hmm. now we, we want to see everything about it. We want to know what the compositions are. We mm -hmm. want to know, you know, we want to know these. There's teams we haven't seen in this environment yet this season with Houston and, and the Valiant. Right. And, you know, it's just it's exciting for a, a lot of reasons. Um, and they're an event that for me in particular is, is almost a little lackluster. Like I don't get super pumped about exhibition games, right. even when there's money on the line, um, not money for us, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, just, I, I don't win anything. And truth be told, I don't think the prize pool is big enough that with the team taking a cut and all the, however, it all gets divided up. I just don't think like all of a sudden the players are like, you know, throwing money up in the air while they lay on their bed, or you know that sort of thing. Like they're not rich as a result right. of these things. Like it's, the it's, in, I mean, the Dota International, nobody, but... the winning teams become millionaires, right? Like literally, that's what happens. Uh, this is just like okay, it it it's just another. It, it's almost like <laughs> the way I think of it is like they're just coming in like when they would normally be off from work and they're doing like a fun, like, Oh, it's the company picnic and we're playing volleyball and you get free food and stuff. And like some people, the win winning some team stuff. at the volleyball tournament gets $200. <laughs> <gift> cards, <laughs> right. Which is, which is fun <laughs> awesome. and is Super great. Awesome. But right. I don't, care. I 
don't care, and right. they don't really care. And a lot of times, no. if I'm in that situation in the office party, I might just choose not to come if I oh. have a choice. Or know? just lose in the first round so you can go eat the eat the picnic. Right, you know, so I can go eat, yeah, stuff like my that. face full of salt potatoes and hamburgers. Like, you know. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so – but I do think that take that part out of it, just look at it in a vacuum, this stage playoffs – or, or in the vacuum of this season, I guess, um, I think is is very compelling here. We are not – I do not think we're favored to just see the th- the third, you know, the dynasty, the uh, – not the soul dynasty, like, but the the Titans versus Shock, like round three. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're – I, no, I don't I think, think that's favored think at all. more likely we see Hangzhou versus Houston than it is – Vancouver versus San Francisco. I would almost, or at least as likely. Like I think we're in that ballpark mm-hmm. where like the the difference in percentage chances to see a, a matchup like like that as opposed right. to what we and have. And we're seen saying this without knowing right what the bracket is yet. So if we say right. something that, oh guys, you realize well, that's not possible that they could play against each. Yeah, it's because yeah. it's not we confirmed know. yet. We know. We know future. <laughs> we know future Einstein. We get it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, last little piece I wanted to talk about before we go over the uh, the actual playoff um, odds and, and what we're actually looking to watch this week is, uh, you know, we, we talked about Mangachu and Logic's coming back, but – or Logic's coming back, Mangachu making his debut. Mangachu, you know, in his first game especially versus the Los Angeles Gladiators – you could tell it was his first game on stage. Okay. He, you know. Yeah. And you could also, I think, tell he had some chops though. Like he didn't, sure. but the team, the team fell flat, but I thought I didn't, I didn't look at him and go, Oh, he's why, but no, I didn't no, look no. at, but I am 37 at, I mean, and say that either. You know, that he sort played, of thing, so. he, he, he played Farah for like five seconds and then they put him on Brie again, which I get, but like, I can, you can't keep me cooped up in here. Okay. I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. <laughs> you gotta let him fly. Come on. <laughs> um, which I think, I think that they will eventually. And I think you know they did. They did they against did. Houston. Right. Mangachu was flying almost the entire time. And right. honestly, they, they came fly. out. Toronto took Oasis off of Houston. Yes. Um, King of the Hill was a great map type for Houston throughout the stage and just in general. And throw out stage two, and they've been very, very good on mm-hmm. King of the Hill. Um, and I was nervous going into that, right? Because it just, yeah. it felt like the teams were heading opposite directions. And I just, if, if Houston was going to make a run, even if it was going to be, a, uh, you know, stepping over Toronto to do it, I'm like, all right, let's, that's fine. Let's have it happen. Cause it doesn't I, feel I like not, both of them. I did not sign off on this. I didn't. You didn't, but it, just, it doesn't feel, <laughs> what I'll say is it doesn't feel like both of them can make the play ends, right? right? So it feels like if Houston's going to get in, I'm it's going to be in Toronto's spot. Right. um that that sort of a thing but uh, going in yeah anyway so going into it i was i was obviously rooting for houston they're they're my favorite over toronto and i was very nervous after toronto took that first game because i mean logics was just on mccree clicking heads Popping like crazy off and, and widowmaker too widowmaker he looked really really good uh i thought you know farah obviously for mangachu is a it's a great map for the, the farah play so he looked great um, and honestly, both of them really did continue to look good throughout the, the stretch of the series. Mm-hmm. They had hot streaks and cold streaks. I think Mangachu in particular hit some cold streaks. Yep. He's, his hero pool has, for me, always been narrow, right? So I don't think we should be done seeing Ivy um, on stage right. anymore. I think they should be splitting time between uh, Mangachu and Ivy and let Mangachu really focus on the Farah. Maybe a mm-hmm. little bit of, you can flex to some Hanzo if they do want Brig from the DPS line, which if Rolox true, it won't matter next stage. But, um, you know, that sort of thing. So I, I think, but specifically Logics, I think is kind of a game changer here for Toronto mm-hmm. and gives them a very serious chance to try to rally and rebound. And when you look at the way things kind of worked out for them, They've still got two matches coming up this week. They're both winnable games to yeah. me as you look at, at Atlanta as an opponent. Okay, maybe not both of them because NYXL is the other opponent. Oh, um, I, if in my head it was like Sorry, Guangzhou yeah. or something like that. I, mean, I don't I remember them being winnable, but I'll take your word for it here. Um, so but so it's going to be pretty rough. I mean, obviously coming out with a 2-5 and five stage and then a 1-6 and six stage if they're able to get the win uh, next week against Atlanta – 
going to be tough in the home crowd. Obviously, I, I do think they've got a, a solid chance to do it. Um, but, you know, they're a team that just look at their position in the standings right. and say, if if we're talking about teams like Houston and the Valiant having an opportunity, Toronto's above them. So they've very clearly got an opportunity here as well to kind of get things turned around, mm-hmm. make a um, make a push to get back in. And I thought Logics looked great. Uh, he was just constantly the source of pressure that Houston was having to deal mm-hmm. with. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, I think Linkser's widow play has looked a little off in the last two weeks. He's still good. I mean, an off Linkser is still better than half the, the widows out there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Logix was winning some of those duels on Horizon Lunar Colony. It took Linkser going over to Genji just to dive into, <laughs> into Logix's right. face and actually be able to get there and get that kill for them to be able to take the first point. Um, and Houston had to beat Toronto like they have to beat the better teams when they beat them, right? Like mm-hmm. the really good teams. And that's, okay, our offense doesn't look that great, but our defense sure is really, really good, right? So yep. they they put up a score on offense and then just held in front of that. And the way they beat in other teams, even looking at Washington earlier where they won 3-0, to zero, so they did have the drawn map. Uh, you know, they just they just kind of roll, right? Like when they play against bad teams, Houston does tend to roll them unless mm-hmm. they lose sorry, to Florida. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise, you know, when, when they beat bad teams, they do it convincingly. And when they beat good teams, it's, it's a claw, right? They have to rely mm-hmm. on their good defense and, and really get it done. And I thought that's more what the Toronto match was to me. So I thought it looked really good that, you know, for Toronto with yeah. both, you know, their second game, and it wasn't even a full match, I don't think, in the first one for Mangachu, if I'm remembering correctly, um, against the Gladiators. I don't think he was in there for all four maps. They might not it could been. be wrong. I, I yeah. think he started, but I don't remember if he stayed in for all four. Yeah, but the, either way, this was a very new look for Toronto. I thought they looked mm-hmm. better. You know, Logics had an effect on the team and on the game mm-hmm. that I am thirty seven never did when he came in, and we were you know we were hoping for it. We saw we would see flashes of it, but this was more sustained from Logics. He's he's a player you have to account for, you have to worry about, um, and I think he's going to make a, a good solid piece for this team. Hopefully, they can keep him locked up going forward because I think he is that good and and belongs here and. I think Mangachu as well is another one. You can get a lot of use out of player like out of a player like Mangachu. Specialists mm-hmm. belong in Overwatch League. You just have to use them effectively, right. get the most out of them. And <clears throat> Bishop is probably the biggest strength for the Toronto Defiant team um, to date. No matter how good any of these players are, I think right. Bishop's a, a really really good coach. So hopefully he's able to do that. Yeah, I I think I mean the Gladiators match was was rough, but the match against Houston. Especially considering that Houston has improved. I mean, I, I, you go back and watch those matches. Like, it was that was a close three one. That was not a domination. No, um, by I think I, any yeah. Stretch, you, so. Like I, re- I remember telling you, I was like, hey, make sure you watch that because the score. I, you know, I know you were busy that day, and I'm like, yeah. the score might not tell the story, but you're gonna want to. We're gonna want to talk about it, yeah. so you're gonna want to watch it. Yeah, no, no, it was definitely a good one uh, to, to to watch and really get some com- I mean Toronto, we've been talking about it it's, they've been kind of slow to the, to to the plate here but they're like big changes are being made and like I think more more so than gods Sharik um I'm 37 and any of the other swaps I think that Logix is really like you can see he's made a big impact on the team right away and I'm hoping that he can uh he can stick with that so that is, uh, I think, overall a good thing for Toronto. But let us move on here. And oh, let's break it. Yeah. so we've talked about the playoffs. Let's just go over what we need to look out for this week as we go into the Atlanta Rain Homestead uh, Homestand. I don't know what they actually call it. The, the Atlanta Rain home games this weekend. So we have Vancouver Titans, Hangzhou Spark, San Francisco Shock. Seoul Dynasty, Los Angeles Valiant, and the Houston Outlaws. So two, four, six teams out of eight are clinched. They either don't play or nothing that they can do can change what uh, matters for them. They are in, not going to change. Now, we have four teams vying for those last two spots in the playoffs that could theoretically get in or not get in. Uh, The most likely here is New York Excelsior. They are playing against Florida and Toronto, which they are a combined 5-0 against this season. Tack on another, what, 
six or eight wins against, or however many or four wins against Toronto or for Florida last year. Uh, New York Associates never lost to these teams ever. Uh, and they need to win one of these two to, to lock their spot in the um, in the stage three playoffs. Shanghai Dragons, uh, they are four and one versus Guangzhou and Philly. Uh, they need to beat Philly or beat Guangzhou and ma- maintain a map lead versus Philly. So they're currently and they're currently at a plus eight map differential versus Philly or compared to Philly rather. Fusion would need to win versus Washington and so they need to win both. They need to beat Washington and Shanghai. And they also need to get their map differential over Shanghai again. They're currently down eight maps. So 4 0 versus Shanghai, and they would get there. Map differential won't matter there if Shanghai loses both of their games. Okay. So if they, if, okay. So they either need to, yeah. I, you you, you guys are smart. Future, future Einstein, you're, you're smart. You're smarter than I am. You can figure this out. (laughs) Uh, And the LA Gladiators have the, I guess we'll say mathematically possible chance of getting in. Uh, if Philadelphia loses to Washington, Shanghai loses to Guangzhou. So if Philly wins both of their matches versus Washington and Shanghai, Shanghai. and so Philly wins both and Shanghai loses both of their matches. LA which does. is yes. And they play each other, which does make it a little more compelling or no. Philly and Shanghai play each other, so it's a little easier than it would normally be if they weren't right, they a little bit separated there to go in their favor to go a four. specific way. But it's pretty; it's about as likely that the Gladiators make it as it is for the New York Excelsior to not make it from their number one seat on the seat on the perch. And they're currently number one in the standings and not in the stage playoffs. They're they're not clinched, and then Houston right. is at eighth place and clinched. Like it's really really weird to look at, but it's where right, we are. They've so. played. Yeah, they've played more matches so far. That's why. Yep. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these matches, and you'll start to see why uh, maybe some of these uh, <laughs> bold prediction or these bold possibilities are not as possible. So we start off Florida Mayhem versus New York Excelsior. Uh, and again, this is these are we're only doing Saturday and Sunday. Again, this is just like the uh, Dallas Fuel Home Stand. Uh, a bunch of teams aren't playing. Uh, we're only doing two days here because of the the home game. So we start off with Florida versus NYXL. Again, Florida looks improved, but I think Hong Zhao kind of snuffed out that idea that they're uh, that much improved, at least not now. Uh, give me, right, give me you my love five picking votes. Florida. I you love picking Florida. I do. And I also love picking New York <laughs> as well. Give me the 5 0 here. Yeah, it's going to be a 4 0 for, for Nixel. Even if Florida brings in the new players, which I really hope they do. Um, not even a wayward son is going to be able to, to help them in this instance. Uh, they're just going to need time to get that roster to gel, right? Like, even mm-hmm. if that ju- that roster works out perfectly, uh, this is not the team to get your first surprise win over. Though I've said that and been wrong a lot this stage, I will continue to say it again here. For New it's York not happening here. It's not happening here. It's not happening here. There, <laughs> I said it three times. It can't happen. Uh, I forgot to tell people that if you just say something three times, it won't happen. Uh, <laughs> next, it's up. not going to happen here. You said it three times. That won't happen. You just said right now that Florida is going to beat NYXO. I'm just saying. I, I'm You're just using your own the wild card your own mispronunciation <laughs> again <laughs> against you here. Uh, but yeah. I don't even know what to, to say about that. All I, but what I do know what to say is that Philadelphia Fusion are playing against the Washington Justice right after that. Uh, again, no, no, Janice, no win. Give me, give me Philly three one. I'm gonna go Philly three to zero here. Uh, man, Washington looks better to me in this meta when they don't need Ado on Brig and when Corey's able to play Widowmaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do look a lot better, but man. It's just a battle of, like, my two least favorite main tanks in the league, and I guess I just like Sato a little tiny bit more. Um, so, yeah, I'll go Philly here 3-0. to zero. But could this could easily go in Washington's favor, I think. There's there's a chance here as the, the new meta comes out, Washington levels up. But probably not more than Philly does. Just put just put Carpe and EQO on DPS characters, and it should right. be enough, right? Right. Yeah, let let Carpe play Widowmaker, and uh, Winnable is always on the table. Yes. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the first home game for the Atlanta Reign. They are taking on the Toronto Defiant. 
Death, who you got? Well, unfortunately, do you remember last week when I threw my coin over there? You forgot to get. You forgot to. I never up. picked it up, and I remembered it right <laughs> oh, about when we were going over this, the playoff talking points. I have a quarter. I, no, I have a quarter, we but can't flip a quarter. We gotta flip if you have a if you have a good coin, you go ahead. I have but the original um, coin somewhere. Uh, I will say, I think when we look at the map pool for this, and I talked about how I think the Toronto DPS players are much more valuable when they can get on their Widowmakers, their Farahs, and play the things they're they're legitimately very, very good at. Uh, I think that Toronto looks better. I think Atlanta is inexplicably a dumpster fire right now. I don't understand it. Um, but nonetheless, they're 0-5. The home crowd can give you all the advantage in the world, but if you're dead, it doesn't matter how hyped you are. Um, so I think Logix is going to be able to propel them. Oasis, Volskaya, Eichenwald, Dorado... These maps all sound very good for Farah to me, or at least like Farah's playable on all of them. We t- Oasis obviously is yep. great for it. Eichenwald's great for Farah. Um, Dorado, I think you can get away with it. And yeah, you can play play it on Dorado. Yep. They did uh, against Houston. So I think three to two here for Toronto could be three to one, depending on how things go. But I'm going to make it real close because of that home home game advantage. The mm-hmm. the home crowd's going to boost Atlanta a little bit, but maybe not enough. Blevins, who do you got this? Yeah, you know, I want you to be right so bad. I want to shut that home crowd up. I'm going to be actively rooting for Toronto in this match, but I believe a little bit too much in the sports magic. That crowd is going to be something. It's not like it's not even that they're sharing the crowd like with uh, Dallas. I mean, Dallas definitely owned that crowd versus Houston, but it was still shared in some ways. This is going to be a hundred percent Atlanta crowd. They're going to get the Defan, uh, or not Defan, the Defan, the Fran fans. Uh, there, it could be crazy. This could be the the most hyped a crowd has been. Um, I thought Defan was deliberate, by the way. So it was. I, it, it definitely could have just it. ran with it. You We're going to have the Defans in there. Uh, but I don't know. Now we've got Defran bowing out of the the Bren Widow matchup one v one. He's not doing that anymore. Baby no. Bay took his place. Yeah, but I think the, he's. But Defran is doing the one v one Torb listen. matchup versus Mangachu. It's not that like Defran has multiple hype. matches to prepare for on the week or anything like that. He could just do both of them. I'm saying it now. He is terrified of Bren. He has no idea how to win that Widow one v one. I think he's a coward, and he backed out. I'm saying it now. He may have. I don't <laughs> think. I think Bren is the better widow. He's got to pick up the night shift at McDonald's. Okay, that's it. That's just don't don't hate on him because he's you know he's he's blue collar <laughs> now. Uh, but with that being said, I got I I can't in this case with Toronto still. I think being in a developmental stage, and I'll logic could pop off. Mangachu could pop off, and I hope that it happens. I'm not betting on it. Give me Atlanta here three to two, but that doesn't mean we are going to be flipping the coin. I think the original coin is on my other table, but I do have the Hearthstone coin. And number one, that's going to be heads for for um, you know going first, and then we've got the other side, which is tails. We, we, we got to go. We got to go. Tails never fails for Toronto, right? I'm sure. Ooh, that. That's a one. So that does not look good for Atlanta. Or that does not look good for Toronto. That means Atlanta, the coin picks Atlanta here to win 3-2, unfortunately. But we shall see if there's anyone who can who can outdo the coin. I think it is Mr. Hearthstone's a dumb game, and their coin's dumb, too. True. You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Guangzhou Charge versus Shanghai Dragons. And even though they have... I, I still cannot pick the Guangzhou Charge. Give me Shanghai for you. Who do they have? I, I don't hear it, so that's why I'm, I'm just confused. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, what, I press I press the button like five times. I just I'm wondering if you're playing the carry on one no. for the wrong team. Is okay. All right, no, you're fine. Think, think, uh, I'm, think about the other drops we have and what players are on. What's I, one I, player? I was. It's got to be Eileen, then, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, he got, anyways, he got there. <laughs> <laughs> moving on uh, yeah I'm going to give it to Shanghai here 4-0 to zero. Guangzhou flashes and gives teams good games but they don't tend to beat these good teams and, and Shanghai has to be counted in that category now 
Um, they're, they've been very consistent over multiple stages. I'm very confident in them to at least perform adequately, and I, I really can't mm -hmm. say that about Guangzhou. So, yeah, 4 Sheng. So right now, if our day one goes as we have agreed upon, that means New York and Shanghai are the last two spots in this playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to Sunday, we've got Philadelphia Fusion versus the Shanghai Dragons. Again, Philly really kind of uh, not looking great here. Um, I mean, if they do just play... If, it start, if we start seeing Carpe and EQO on DPS heroes, like anything's possible. But Shanghai's actually look quite good, and uh, you know, old dead Philly back again. Give me, uh, give me Shanghai three one. Yeah, it definitely improves their odds to have those guys back on DPS, but they still got the wrong tank out there, and he's still having problems even when that happens. And um, it'll make them better, but it, it doesn't put them up into becoming favorites in my mind against other uh, even mid-table teams at the moment. I, I've got I've always been this way. You've got to show it to me, and I've got to you've got to prove it before I'm going to start to buy in. So give me Shanghai here, and I'm going to give it to him with a four zero. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's it's could be a rough one here for Philly this week. Now you say they got to show it to you before you can give it to them. But let's talk about your prediction for Washington justice versus Guangzhou charge. Yeah. Um, so I don't have faith in either of these teams uh, to be perfectly honest Fair. with you, but I've seen Washington at their best when they're able to put Corey on, on Widowmaker mm -hmm. and when they're able to let Ado not play Brig, I just don't think he's a very good Brig, but I've been a fan of his DPS play for a, a good little while now. Um, I think it's going to be really, really close between these two. And I just want to believe a little bit that Washington can, can go out there and get a second win. I mean, Florida was able to do it. I, I don't see any reason why Washington needs to be kind of left out. I don't think they're leaps and bounds below um Guangzhou here so they, they've got a solid chance and I think the the meta change might make it difficult for Guangzhou to really know what they're getting up uh get going to be going up against uh, give me some three DPS compositions put Janice on ball I think that minimizes his ability to just feed and he's just able to get out a little better on that hero maybe um it's an outside chance it's a long shot but I'll go Washington three I'm not. I I know better than to pick a team that's starting Janice. Uh, I'm I'm going with Guangzhou here. Uh, you picked I, a team that was starting Janice 40 times last season, right? And they lost some of the times that they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but I didn't. I wasn't sure if they were going to start Janice at any given time. They just did sometimes. But it was only ever one map, so I get your point. Yeah, we're going tails never fails here for Guangzhou. Uh, Ooh, and that would be right there. Guangzhou taking this one for the coin. All right, next up, we've got the second home game for Atlanta as they take on the Florida Mayhem. And whew, I just talked some big game about uh, the home the home crowd being as big as ever. But give I'll me some Florida. I've been, it's been way too long <laughs> since I picked Florida. Give me Florida here, 3-1. They're better. Like you said, Atlanta's a dumpster fire right now. I think Florida's a little bit further at, along in their developmental progression than Toronto here, which at least half – heartedly explains my difference <laughs> my difference in picks here uh, but give me florida 3-1 it explains nothing florida's not integrated their new players yet all they played was rain uh you're a, a big ball of lies blevins i don't trust anything you say anymore uh, yeah, no i'm gonna pick atlanta here three to one but man i really see another opportunity for florida here to get a third win in in this season i see it i'm picking on you for it but i i see it and i told a part of me wanted to pick it right but i already picked atlanta to lose the last one and i just it's it would be heartbreaking for for those fans to go Good. watch them get go get to i want to see them get o2 i hope they lose both why do you hate i play games so much i hate atlanta um, rain <laughs> i hate the atlanta rain i'm saying it here i'm as biased as can be i've never once said that i wasn't and i'm never not going to be screw but the rain not biased enough to pick 
your second favorite team to beat the same team you're talking about it. right now. Toronto's just, gotta earn it for me. I'm just saying. Right. Toronto's gotta earn it for Florida's me. Florida's earned it. Florida um, has my has had my blood, sweat, and tears for two seasons now. I need to get one prediction not, right. This is not the yet time. earned it. I'm just I'm just saying. They might have gotten your blood, sweat, and tears for two straight years, but they've not earned your blood, sweat, or no, tears they yet. Haven't. Uh, hopefully they they start to here. Um, yeah, I just I, I've just got it. The home crowd has to count for something, right? And it's as a situation with Florida where I just don't know what they're going to play. If I knew they we were going to be getting a new look from them, if I knew Gargoyle was going to be in, you know, something like that, which he did step in a little bit late last week, if memory serves. Um, I just I don't know. There's too much up in the air. Atlanta's at least got that consistent roster. I don't think they're as bad as their record is. They're kind of like the the Houston of, of stage two to me, mm. um, where this doesn't make sense, but it's what's happening, and it's really hard to dig yourself out of that hole without a break or some something to really reset, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't think they've gotten that. Just because they had a week off, they've been traveling, doing home, you know, home appearances, mm-hmm. things like that. I don't know how restful that is, but hopefully for them they're, they're able to get it turned around. Um, and if you can't beat Florida, I think you've got to got to kind of hit that panic button when you're at zero and five, and they make you go, you know, go to zero and seven. True, uh, but that does mean that tails is not going to fail Florida here. Ooh, Ooh but that Atlanta coming through the coin loves the home team here. It finally, doesn't hate me. True, coin the coin loves the home team. Final game of the homestand here. We've got NYXL versus Toronto. You had your nightmare, no win scenario match, although you clearly were favoring uh, Houston for playoff reasons. But uh, I've got mine this week. And uh, yeah, if I didn't pick Toronto to beat Atlanta, I'm not picking them to beat New York. Give me the give me the four zero here for New York. Come on, we've, you've thrown logic out enough they're out the window. You can pick logics if you're not that's using true. logic. I feel like, but uh, no, it, it makes I'm sense. There's there's only York, that's silly. there's there's <laughs> only one result to to pick here, and that is a four zero for NYXL. Uh, it's not the matchup you want to get things turned around or anything. It's, it's bad timing for Toronto. So yeah, Especially good. since if they beat Atlanta in the first game, they're going to be getting booed. In or or Atlanta fans, hear me. As much as I don't want you to boo my team, you need to be booing the team that beats your team in your stadium. I want I want them to be booing. You can boo my team if they're not as long as they're not at home. Right. I almost want my team getting booed. Um, I just want but, booing yeah. to be done in the correct spots, and this is a correct spot. I, I, yeah, it, I, you're not wrong there. It's I also not for booing like a, because the boos have no tongues. <laughs> it also doesn't strike me as like a super Farah heavy. You know, I, so I don't. I don't know that the map pool really suits Toronto here. Maybe they can steal Numbani because that is a little Farah uh, mm. dominant. Uh, we don't know yeah, that we, we have know Libero Farah. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. I might take Mangachu on the Pharaoh over Libero. All right, uh, Libero, uh, Mangachu, 1v1 on Pharaoh. Let's get this happening. Mangachu doesn't happen. have enough to do next weekend. Book it. we got to get it to happen. <laughs> um, don't know why they would do that at the Atlanta home game. <laughs> Sign them up. Let's go. Yep. Um, also, uh, DeFran needs to 1v1 uh, Brandon Widow. Needs to 1v1 you. Uh, McCree only on King's Row is what needs to happen. Who? You? Defan. I'll fight you. No, defend. <laughs> defend. I mean, I'm not such a coward that I would back out to go play a Torb Hammer 1v1 against Blevins or anything. Oh. I'll say that much. No, you got If Fran wants that fight, I'll take it. I'm not going to win it, but I'll take it. I, I'm I'll not enough of a coward to not take it. I am, however, enough of a coward to disconnect halfway into the match. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and, and, and blow the whistle and just see me diving, dive bombing from the, ra- the rafter, <laughs> rafters onto the stage, crushing the computers. I know that would happen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's going to be the Atlanta homestead, homestand weekend. Obviously, the week after, we've got playoffs and we'll be talking about those uh afterwards so if our predictions are correct we're going to be seeing vancouver titans hong Jia spark san francisco shock soul dynasty la valiant houston outlaws nyxl and shanghai dragons in the 
uh, playoffs for next week. So should be, I think, like we said before, probably the most interesting stage playoffs we've had maybe ever because I, I'm looking at these teams and like you said, I, I, I honestly agree with you. Houston Outlaws versus Hongshaw Spark, if it's possible within the within the bracket, uh, is just as likely as the rematch of Hongshaw or sorry the um, San Francisco Shock versus Vancouver Titans. Like I, I could see any of the, any two of these teams being in the finals and not being super like holy crap! I cannot believe this happened unless like Soul is the only one that I don't really see being in the same in in the same tier as, as these other teams. But, you know, they've Soul is one of those teams that plays up in certain situations. So I, I could definitely see it. But uh, yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be it for us. Uh, anything else we want to talk about before we get going death? No, I think that's it. Enjoy a, a week off of, of having to root for or against Houston because uh, it's going to be back for playoff week. That's for sure. Yeah, we're gonna be, uh, man. We're if if Houston plays New York in the playoffs, it's gonna be. I'm, a, I'm gonna be obnoxious. It is gonna be a little <laughs> bit of a heated podcast, as I'll say. But I'm sure it will be one of the better ones we've had. But guys, that's gonna be it for us. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out High Noon Podcast on everything. Twitter, Twitch, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. Look for High Noon Podcast. We're High Noon Podcast everywhere. Also on Patreon, patreon.com slash High Noon Podcast. Support us on there as well. But, guys, that is going to be it for Death Blow. I am the Blevins. And remember, it's High Noon. Got his boots and he put on his hat. Threw the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back He says, finding mine now guides my way He's not good, but he sure ain't bad He'll make amends for the sins that he has He says, I'll change the world one bullet at a time Till I find mine Ooh, Atlanta Rain actually gets custom jerseys And... They don't look bad, but they don't look great. They're just black and red. <laughs> Lame. Lame! Baseball jerseys, though. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs>